What's going on, guys? It's Danny from Fantasy Stock Exchange here today. I'll be going through my top week four waivers, guys, at the running back and wide receiver positions that you can go to your waiver wire, submit a claim for, and hope help you for your fantasy football teams for the foreseeable future. I'm going to be going through eight players in total today, five main players, and three honorable mentions that you guys can pick up, boost your squad, and hopefully get the dub for you in week four for your fantasy football matches. Whether you're currently 3-0, 2-1, 1-2, or even 0-3, there are some guys on this week's waiver wire that can make a big difference when it comes to your fantasy football teams. So if you enjoy this video, make sure you leave a like down below, comment your favorite waiver claim of the week, and subscribe to the channel. We just crossed 15,000 last week. I appreciate you guys for the continued support on the road to 20,000 subscribers. But as always, before we get into it, let's hit the intro. All right, before I get into the main players, I briefly want to mention some guys that should be rostered in your league, but if they are not currently rostered in your league, make sure you go up, you spend on, you make sure you add to your fantasy football lineups. Ramondre Stevenson, running back of the New England Patriots, looks to have taken over the main lead back type of role from Damian Harris. He commanded the majority of the volume, the goal line opportunity, and all of the receiving work out of that Pats backfield. So Ramondre Stevenson, I am comfortable projecting as an RB3 maybe even a fringe RB2, especially if you're in a zero RB build. So if he's available on your wire, I know, you know, maybe 20, 25% of leagues might have him available. Make sure you go and submit a claim for Ramondre Stevenson. Jeff Wilson, same type of deal. Volume in San Francisco, especially until Elijah Mitchell gets back. Jahan Dotson, breakout type of rookie. Running all the routes. Commanded eight targets this past week. Go out and scoop Dotson if he's available. Tyler Boyd, breakout week this week. Five targets, 105 yards uh, for the Bengals, including that long touchdown. I expect him to be, you know, the third wide receiver in that offense. And if anything were to happen to Chase or Higgins, he sees a major value uptick tethered to the right arm of Joe Burrow. Now we're going to go through the, you know, the handcuffs, if you will. Jamal Williams, if he is available on your waiver wire, make sure you go and make a priority claim for. DeAndre Swift is expected out for the next couple of weeks. Isn't expected to return, according to Dan Campbell, until that October 13th game against Dallas Cowboys. So if you're in need of running back help, Jamal Williams figures to be that main RB1 in Detroit, available in 45% of leagues. So if he is available in yours, go submit a claim for Jamal Williams. Same type of deal when it comes to Alexander Madison and Brian Robinson. But the final guy that I really wanted to include in this video, but he was rostered in too many leagues, 65% of leagues, according to Yahoo Fantasy, is Chris Olave, wide receiver of the New Orleans Saints. I mean, he stepped into that role that we saw from Garrett Wilson emerge this past week. Nine for 147 on 12 targets in a game where he operated as that Saints main wide receiver one with Michael Thomas banged up in the second half. He looks like he's already a top two wide receiver on this team in terms of snaps, routes run, and overall targets he's been seeing. And again, if Michael Thomas were to miss any time at any point this year, he could be a potential league winning top 15 to 20 level receiver. Despite working with a guy like Michael Thomas, he's already commanded a 25.2% target share to start his rookie season. So if he is available on your wire in terms of Chris Olave, go out, go bid on. He is a top 36 wide receiver in my rest of season rankings. But now let's go into some guys. I'm recording this prior to Monday Night Football, but you guys will see that in retrospect. Guys that maybe you should have watched out for in that Cowboys-Giants matchup. Just want to mention Matt Breida. If he's available, you know, if anything were to happen to Saquon Barkley, he would instantly be one of the top claims of the week. As well as Noah Brown, wide receiver for the Dallas Cowboys. He looks to figure as that wide receiver three, especially when Michael Gallup comes back. But but this could very well be a valuable wide receiver three type of role when Dak Prescott is back to the office. And by all accounts, it sounds like Dak Prescott is aiming for his return to be in week five against the LA Rams or week six against the Philadelphia Eagles. So if Noah Brown's available, you know, you got end of the bench spot. I don't mind doing that. And again, if anything were to happen to CeeDee Lamb, Noah Brown would see a significant uptick in terms of volume. But now let's get into the top five waivers of the week. The number one waiver pickup under 50%, according to Yahoo Fantasy, is going to be Khalil Herbert, running back of the Chicago Bears. As you know, if you would have watched the Houston versus Chicago game, 
David Montgomery suffered a knee ankle injury that is really expected to linger with him and costed him a finish for that matchup against the Texans. I'll get into how Herbert performed once he took over that RB1 role, but despite coaches describing Monty as, you know, a day-to-day type of player in terms of his injury, Dr. Edwin Porras actually points out that this can be an injury that lingers longer than reported. David Montgomery was rolled up on here, MCL implicated, which would be four to six weeks, and if it's a high ankle, two to four weeks. If Khalil Herbert is expected to see any RB1 type of work, he immediately becomes a priority ad, you know, spend the fab on because he is going to be a top 15 running back in the ranks as long as he is named that full bell cow type of starter, which he showed he has that potential upside in instances where David Montgomery misses. We would have seen against the Texans, Herbert showed that he can be, you know, one of those most valuable handcuffs in fantasy, you know, Alexander Madison type. I wouldn't say quite, you know, AJ Dillon, Tony Pollard because of their standalone value, but top, top handcuffs. You have to consider Khalil Herbert in that mix. 22 opportunities, RB1 overall week in relief of David Montgomery. Absolutely smash in that spot. Even if David Montgomery is fully ready to go, I think Herbert is a priority stash. And of course, the caveat here is if Monty misses any time at any point, as I said, Khalil Herbert steps into a top 15 level running back role. In terms of fab, I mean, if you want to spend, you know, 15, 20%. I would wait to see what the status of uh, David Montgomery is going on Tuesday night. Obviously, you guys are going to know that going to your fab bid. So if David Montgomery is expected to miss the next few weeks, blow your fab. Khalil Herbert is definitely worth that spot. But if David Montgomery is expected back this week, I would still go out, add Khalil Herbert as a priority handcuff. Maybe you only have to spend 5 to 10% of your fab at that point. Number two waiver claim of the week is going to be Romeo Dubes, wide receiver of the Green Bay Packers. Rookie wide receiver finally stood out this week. Although Christian Watson did miss this game with a hamstring injury, we did see Romeo Dubes go to an 8 for 73 and one line on his eight targets and actually led this team in terms of route to run. You guys would see that on the screen. As we know, gaining Aaron Rodgers' trust is a hard thing to do especially as a rookie wide receiver. But if Dubes is going to go and command eight targets from Aaron Rodgers on any given week, it's definitely worth the upside pick. And with Romeo Dubes, young ascending wide receiver, yes, he didn't really have the draft capital, but that doesn't really matter. As long as he earns Aaron Rodgers' trust and has a chance to be the wide receiver one in an Aaron Rodgers-led Green Bay offense, he is absolutely worth the flyer. Upside is through the wazoo. We know that Aaron Rodgers is one of the best real-life quarterbacks in the NFL. We expect this Green Bay passing offense to kick in next year as the season rolls along. And Romeo Dubes could potentially be a big part of that. In terms of fab, he didn't have, you know, a crazy game. But if you want to spend up to 5 to 10% of your fab in your league, get a young ascending breakout candidate, which is what Romeo Dubes represents. I'm all for it. Next waiver in the number three waiver pickup of the week is going to be George Pickens, wide receiver of the Pittsburgh Steelers, 40% rostered in Yahoo leagues. And we saw this week that his targets went up. 29 routes run seven targets in this past week against Cleveland Browns on Thursday Night Football, including, of course, if you guys watch Thursday Night Football, that highlight reel one-handed snag, very similar to what we saw from Odell Beckham in his rookie year. But uh, this one for me, it's pretty simple. He is a player that I want to get cheap right now before that inevitable, you know, rookie blow up type of game where you'll have to bid the farm to get him. I'll be honest, watching that game, Chase Claypool does not look like that same player like he did as a rookie. It's clear to me that the plan for the Pittsburgh Steelers in the log run, maybe by the end of the season, by the midway point of the season, is going to be acclimating George Pickens to a more variety type of role. Right now, he's just kind of running nine routes. He's running curls. He's running posts. But I definitely feel like as the season rolls along, they'll develop that route tree. And if that's going to be the result, if he's going to continue to get a high target share as the season rolls along, first couple games wasn't really there. Seven targets in this game is exactly what you want to see from an encouraging standpoint. He is the perfect stash. If he gets to a point where he goes out next week and he puts up, you know, 12 targets, 120 yards and a touchdown, you're going to have to spend your whole fab budget on him. But because he has not had that breakout yet, five to 10% should be able to get it done and scoop up George Pickens in your league. Number four is going to be Russell Gage, wide receiver of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 42% rostered in Yahoo leagues. And we do expect that Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Julio Jones are going to be back soon. But in the meantime, we did see this past week that the Bucks clear cut wide receiver one is indeed Russell Gage. $30 million man this offseason was able to convert 13 targets into a 12 for 87 in one day in fantasy. And let's be honest, as long as he's getting snaps, 
gauges tethered to the right arm of Tom Brady on what we expect to be a top offense in the NFL. Obviously, Mike Evans is expected back this week after his suspension this past week against the Green Bay Packers. And Chris Godwin still dealing with his hamstring issues. Julio Jones, who knows when he's going to return to practice, never mind play. So with Russell Gage, you're getting the healthiest wide receiver on the Tampa Bay roster apart from Mike Evans. And if he could even figure to that wide receiver two, wide receiver three type of role when Godwin gets back, there's a lot of volume to go around with what we expect to be in ascending Tampa Bay offense as the season rolls along. Final waiver claim is going to be Zay Jones, wide receiver of the Jacksonville Jaguars, 10% rostered in Yahoo Fantasy Leagues. He's quietly commanded a 21.7% target share this far with the Jacksonville Jaguars, and he looks to be the clear-cut wide receiver two for an ascending Jaguars offense. I'll be honest, we were lower on the Jacksonville Jaguars and Trevor Lawrence as a whole this offseason, but, but based on what I've seen on these first few weeks of that Jaguars offense, I'm sold. Doug Peterson, that scheme, Trevor Lawrence, that ascension, that second year step that he's taken. I am perfectly fine investing in parts of this Jaguars offense based on how it's looked thus far. And if Zay Jones is going to go out there and be that wide receiver two to Christian Kirk's wide receiver one for the foreseeable future, there's definitely a lot of value to be had in that role. Think of him as a, you know, a wide receiver four or five, you know, second flex level player in your lineup. So don't bid a farm on him because he hasn't exactly, you know, proven that he could be a wide receiver two or three for the long run. But if you need some depth, 5%, I think is a fine bid for a guy like Zay Jones who I think can have some standalone value for the rest of the season. Then, of course, if anything were to happen to Christian Kirk, he would become that number one overall weapon on that Trevor Lawrence-led offense. Honorable mentions rapid fire are going to be Greg Dortch, wide receiver of the Arizona Cardinals. He's seen 23 targets in his first three games, and he's performed as a top 20 wide receiver in PPR and fantasy thus far. He looks like he's in a valuable spot in this offense. He's occupying that Rondale Moore type of role until Rondale Moore gets back, which by all accounts doesn't look to happen within the next couple of weeks. So Greg Dortch, until Rondale gets back, should be looked as a wide receiver for, you know, plug him in as your second flex. I think Greg Dortch can absolutely deliver in that spot, especially if you're not really counting on him on a consistent week-to-week basis. Next player, Isaiah McKenzie, wide receiver of the Buffalo Bills. Nine targets this past week. He posted his best fantasy performance of the season, and we just want pieces of this Bills offense. Struggling against the Dolphins, we expect them to get right this upcoming week. I mean, if the Buffalo Bills are rolling, they are by far, in my opinion, the best offense in the NFL. And being that slot wide receiver for Josh Allen can prove to be absolutely valuable as the season goes along. Finally, Samaj P. Ryan, running back of the Cincinnati Bengals, mentioned some of the priority handcuffs earlier in the video, but he is the clear-cut handcuff to Joe Mixon. He saw 11 opportunities in relief of Mixon this past week, and you want to scoop him now before his price inevitably skyrockets if anything were to happen to Joe Mixon. If Joe Mixon went down tomorrow, if Joe Mixon went down Sunday, Samaj P. Ryan would then be considered the top waiver claim of the week and a 100% of your fab type of player. So if you could scoop him now for free, a spot on your bench to stash him, I think he is well worth the stash given what he's shown and given the propensity of this offense we expect to pick up in the upcoming weeks. But either way, if you have made it to the end of this video and you've enjoyed it thus far, make sure you smash the like button down below. Try to get this video to 100 likes. Appreciate that a ton. And for those of you that haven't subscribed already, what are you doing? Hit that subscribe button. Help us on our road to 20,000 subscribers. But either way, appreciate you guys for sticking around. Take care. Good luck in your matchups. Wire me the money.